Hey guys, what's up? Misha here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick video showing you how I go about routing get good drums in contact for multi out use. So uh, I've got my instance of contact open here. Now, uh, it's best if you follow this step by step because contact's a little finicky and we're just working around uh, its, its uh, weirdness a little bit just to get this to work. The first thing that you're going to do is go to add channels here. Uh, and you're going to want to make sure that your uh, default states like this. This is what it should be like. Um, but it's uh, pretty much the uh, initialized state. Um, let's add like, I think 18 channels should be good. Number of channels, two. So that's stereo is what that means. Um, but you want 18 of them. Uh, and you're going to select this first one as your, uh, your host output. And click ascending output assignment. And then you're going to want to click these two boxes here which makes this your default configuration and deleting existing channels before creating new one, which I'm just doing to be safe. But if you do that, you'll get that. And you'll see you have a bunch of stereo channels here. And uh, this should all be ascending. It should all be ascending like that. Um, now I have these outputs are not reflected by that because this is one of the weird things about contact is you kind of have to like restart it with this state. So what I'm going to do is save the output selection as the VST plugin right here. So that when I reopen it, so now when we reopen it, you can see all these stereo channels have been added in. So that's great. This gives us a good starting point. So now we can open up GGD and here, let's just do that. So now it's really just about um, assigning these to these channels. Um, and just for the sake of making this simple, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and label these first. And uh, if we do it this order, it'll kind of help you out in the long run. It'll be less steps. So uh, just bear with me while I do this. So we'll do kick. And then uh, on the snare, we've got the top mics and the bottom mics, we can separate all those out. So snare top one, snare top two, snare bottom. Um, and I just like, uh, I personally like doing this in order. Um, the way it's set up in here just makes everything kind of neat. So just bear with me while I enter all this stuff in. And then we move on to symbols. And of course, you could simplify this if you want, but might as well do the version where everything is sort of split up. What am I missing? Splash in China. And then we will get a channel for the actual overheads near room and far room. All right, now that we have that, what we can do is we can save this as a state again. So save current output section state as the default for the VST plugin. And now we close it again, open it again, but now all these things will be named in the actual outputs we can actually activate all these outputs now. Just the ones that we need. That looks like I have a couple extra channels there. Um, anyways, so now when we open this up, we'll have these all sort of labeled correctly. And all you do is just match them. So for the kick, we're going to put that there. Overhead, route that out to overhead, near room, far room. Um, it's it's a bit tedious. Don't worry, you'll only have to do this once because you, then you could save a template with this. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do all this in real time just so you can follow right along. So once again, matching that out. So Tom 1 through 4. And the beauty of doing it this way is now you have these over here are all labeled correctly, which is kind of cool. Um, it just saves you like 
a little step there. Okay, once again, near room and far room. Um, and hopefully if you're watching this and you kind of have an understanding of what I'm doing here, you can see how you could route things differently. Like you could use more outputs to have these toms near room and far room go to different outputs if you want it. But we won't get into that because it's already complicated enough as it is right now. Um, so yeah, right stack splash China. And we are almost there. Now let's test this out. And as you can see, these are going to these correct outputs here. These are all stereo channels too, so you can pan them in here or you could pan them in the Cubase mixer. Um, but there we go, everything is now routed correctly. Um, and you can save this multi, you can save this project. I'm gonna save it right now. And the one last thing that I like to do just to make things a little bit neater is uh, I like to create sums of these tracks of like the snare, the toms, and the room. So what I'm gonna do for Cubase here is create th uh, three group channels, okay? Um, and we're gonna make these stereo and we're gonna do three of them, all right? Then I'm gonna name the first one snare well, snare sum, just to be clear, toms, and room sum. And this way, you can sort of process these individual things um, on the channel, or you could apply effects directly to the, the, the group. And I like to just place these sort of on top of what they're going to be uh, summing. So... If we go here to the mixer, then the last step is just to select these three channels. I like to do Q-Link, that way you can just get these routed. And then now you can send the snare channels to snare sum. You can send the tom channels to tom sum, or just toms. And uh, same thing for the room. And let's just check that this works. So yeah, if we solo this, yeah, that's the room there. Anyways, um, yeah, I know that that's a bit complicated, um, but uh, hopefully if you started from the same starting point, which should just be the default state, hopefully you'll get this to work. Thanks so much for watching, guys.